Time for Rocky Long. You ready? I am ready. The Red Ripper! Aztecs head football coach Rocky Long on the Corky's Hotline. Coach, good evening. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm trying to remember back to my high school days. I don't think we had face masks. <laughs> I look like we didn't have face masks. I can tell you that much. Coach, uh, I don't know if tonight's a night where you have a chance to get out for any of this high school football stuff. I know you love it, but huge night, all the rivalries, one versus two. You getting out, or, or is tonight still uh, prep for Hawaii? Well, I'm not getting out, but most of our co- – other than the coordinators, the rest of the coaches will be out throughout the county and watching different games. I mean, we don't necessarily go to the one versus two game. We will be – we'll have a coach there at that one, but uh, we go to the games where we're checking out players and see how they act, you know, in person. Yeah, and um, recruiting going well thus far? Well, we're getting a lot of interest, and everybody acts like they like us, but there's a long time between now and signing date in February. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So uh, talk to us about Hawaii. Don't know a whole lot about Hawaii. Hawaii is uh, probably the second most improved team in our league, Wyoming being the most improved team because both those teams were picked to be dead last in the conferences. And uh, uh, Hawaii is second place to us on the Western Division. Uh, They seem to be, which is unusual, they seem to be playing better on the road. They've won their last two road games. Uh, they beat San Jose State at San Jose, and then they beat Air Force at Air Force, which is really uh, something uh, that you wouldn't expect them to do. Yeah. So, I you were going to say I, something special now. Right? Well, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd never say that. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they they are playing with a lot more confidence. They're playing with a lot more enthusiasm. Uh, their coaching staff, they got a brand-new head coach. They've done a good job. They give us some real problems with some of the things they do on offense that's different than what we've seen the last three weeks. So I'm sure they're coming in to knock us off, and we better be ready. What kind of offensive things are they doing that that are going to give you trouble, Brock? Well, uh, they're doing some things with the running game in the spread Mm -hmm. that uh, they're blocking them a little different than we've seen before. Uh, They have a formation where they've put three tight ends in the game, and and they, they try to pound it at you. And then the real the real issue I think is going to be with us. They have two six foot four, two hundred and fifteen pound wide receivers that they throw it up to on fade routes and streak routes and that kind of thing. And one of them's ca- caught fifty percent of their passes, and he's their deep threat guy. And they're going to throw it up against us. And if we can if we can play it well, we're going to be fine. If we can't play it well, it might be in trouble. So you mentioned Hawaii. They're uh, in second place in the Western Division behind you guys. They're four and five overall. They're three and two inside the conference. Um, as I look at the other side, the mountain side of the conference, Wyoming is leading in Boise State. They obviously were, were upset last week by Wyoming. When you follow the conference, Coach, were you upset that Wyoming pulled the upset because everybody was hoping for a San Diego State-Boise State championship game? I wasn't upset, and I wasn't surprised. Uh, you know, I, I think Boise's a good team, but they're not unbeatable by any means, and and I think uh, for the conference, I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, I, I don't know if that helps us or hurts us, and I don't know if, what it does to the championship game. we we got to win a couple more games to get into the championship game, and when we get there, we're going to try to keep winning so we get the home field advantage. But uh, I, I don't know if that has anything to do with our conference or how it's going to turn out, but I was not surprised because Wyoming is pretty good, and they were playing in Laramie. Yeah, I, I think it's good. I. Look, on one hand, Boise State, you wanted them to be in the top 10, and you wanted San Diego State to have a shot at them in the championship game. But I think for the conference, you got to start having some, some other teams step up. So if Wyoming's program is building to where they can beat a Boise State, I would think that that's good. You need more than two quality teams in the conference. I agree totally with that. I mean, we've got to establish our conference uh, up there in the non-Power 5 leagues as the best conference that is not a non-Power 5 league, and that way you get the power rating, so to speak, when it comes to picking out bowl games, we'd have the power rating. And I I think there's a couple, three teams this this year on that side of the bracket. I I think that side of the bracket changes yearly, but the Mountain Division seems to be stronger from top to bottom than the Western Division does, and that will change from year to year. But you've got to have three or four quality teams every single year. Right. Rocky Long, Scott and BR, got the big homecoming game tomorrow night at Qualcomm Stadium and the San Diego State playing against Hawaii. Coach, now that we see Pumphrey has a real chance to get – to become the all-time leading rusher in college football history. Are you – is it on your mind 
during the game. Let me let me put it that way. No, it's not on our mind during the game. I, I mean, obviously, he's going to get his touches because that he's a big part in us trying to win the game. So he's he's going to get plenty of touches that if we do well up front and he does well, that he's got a chance to break that record. We don't have to think about it. I, I think our whole our whole program's excited about being part of this deal, but. He, I mean, the game plan going in is always for him to get enough touches to be able to break that record if he has a good day. Rock, have, have you sat down and just thought about what makes him the force that he is out on the football field? Well, I mean, we can we can talk about that forever. You know, sure. he's got great vision. He's got great quickness. He makes people miss. He can break a tackle. I mean, all those things that all great running backs have. But I think the best thing that he is is he's an unbelievable competitor. I mean, he – and, and I, I don't know if this is good or bad. He likes to win, but he hates to lose at everything. I mean, even in video games, he gets mad if somebody <laughs> beat on the team beats him. So he hates to lose, uh-huh. and I think that's a driving force. Plus, you know, he's the little guy. That he's been told forever and ever he can't do something, and he doesn't like being told that either. You know, if I'm an NFL scout and I look at him, I'm wondering if they're saying, well, yeah, he's durable. He's getting 32 carries in a game against a Utah State. But let's face it, he's not getting 32 carries a game against – Alabama, LSU, Michigan, USC. I'm just wondering, Coach, what do you think about this this question of durability given his size? What do you all, think about that? All I can say is what, what the pro scouts that come by here say. And early in the season, they were saying, all of them were saying, that he's a hard sell. I mean, he's a hard sell to any GM. He's a hard sell to any head coach. Because they don't know, they know he's a great talent, but they don't know where they can use him. You know, kickoff returns, punt returns, put him in the slot, throw the ball a little bit to him, put him in on uh, third down so that he can flare out there or run screens and get him the ball in the open field. Well, that was that was all of them saying that. Now, now about halfway through the season, there's um, all of them are saying they're going to be a hard sell to the GM and to the head coach. But there's about half of them saying they think he can be a tailback now. So I don't know enough about the NFL to make a legitimate suggestion, but obviously they're changing their mind a little bit. Coach, uh, tomorrow afternoon, I think it's 4 o'clock is kickoff. Is that right? Right, right. Okay, 4 o'clock kickoff tomorrow, and Hawaii's coming to town. And I think, again, it should be an emotional night with Marshall Falk there Mm -hmm. as the Aztec Warrior captain and Pumphrey – you know, fifth on the all-time list, and apparently a really big crowd is expected tomorrow night, over 40,000-plus. This is going to be a great night, I hope. I, I hope so, too. I mean, we've been trying to get that kind of crowd forever, and, and it's nice of them to come out, and it's nice of Marshall to be there, too. That adds a little something special to it. But, uh, you know, we, we're going to have to play well. I think we're going to get their best. They're going to come out here and try to knock us off. We're going to get their best, so we better be ready to play. Yeah. Pumphrey right now behind D'Angelo Williams at Memphis, Tony Dorsett at Pitt, Ricky Williams at Texas, and Ron Dane at Wisconsin. Dane has nearly 6,400 yards. Pumphrey has nearly 5,800 yards. So a couple of a couple of big games here, 200 here, 250. I mean, before you know it, Donnell Pumphrey is going to be the all-time leading rusher in that, college football history. Uh, uh, amazing. It's incredible. It's amazing. That is pretty amazing, isn't oh. it? It's something special now is what that is, <laughs> I think. Coach, we wish you the best of luck homecoming Saturday evening against Hawaii. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Always Rock. a pleasure. Rocky Long, head football coach at San Diego State. Like he said, all of his assistant coaches, other than the coordinators, will be out and about tonight for high school football, scouting all over the county. He says he's got a lot of interest, but long time between now and, and, and signing day, and he knows because remember last year he had that, that quarterback from Mount Carmel, Lucas Johnson, who uh, at the last second decided to go to Georgia Tech. Oh, boy. And not like Georgia Tech is any good. You know, Lucas Johnson would be putting himself in a great position right now, but Christian Chapman's got the job from Carlsbad. Don't enough. And uh, the Aztecs with an opportunity to keep their unbeaten streak alive inside the conference. It's been going on for a while now.